Good afternoon everybody and welcome back to another Krebs Coho replay cast. This time around we're going to be looking at Thomas the Tank Engine and his awesome strength in pulling coaches. Oh my god how I missed you Thomas the Tank Engine. And oh god okay I'm just kidding guys. Let's get on to this replay. Now then what we're actually going to be focusing on this time around we're going to be looking at a 1v1 on Rec Train featuring an American player Freestyler versing his opponent on the Southern and Sh uh, Shepaka, the Vermont player. So you guys have been requesting a vanilla matchup, and I know I've been doing a lot of opposing fronts matchups lately. So here you guys go, a vanilla matchup as you guys like it, a Vermont versus American matchup. Okay, guys. So whilst all this building is happening and all the un uninteresting uh, beginning stuff is <laughs> happening, going on, let's take a look at what the map is like. So this is actually the second time I've ever cast this map. The other time I casted it was a Brit and uh, Vermont game, I believe so. But anyway, so onto this one. So let's take a look at the map. There's loads and loads of plus five points, so low points, and there are a few medium points. So there are a few um, medium munitions point over here. And there's another set over here. Now what makes it interesting if you look on the map is that this pair, this set, is between all this cover, all the wreckage, all the destruction that occurred, hence the wreck train name. Um, so there's lots and lots of cover. On contrast, there is on this side practically no cover whatsoever. In fact, it's just the opposite. What you have is a big road going through the center and that is going to be providing red cover. You have a bit of uh, tactical options by having a few trees that is going to provide um, an omnipresent uh, yellow cover. That meaning uh, omnipresent, obviously, whatever direction you are, you are absolutely fine. Unlike green cover, which is directional. Okay. So let's take a look at what is going on. The capping order, we have Vermont Pioneers capping way here. Likewise, we also got Engineers capping way over here. So uh, they're obviously going to meet somewhere in between. And hmm, it looks like they're not going to be meeting in between. In fact, these ones are going to be going straight for the fuel point. Whilst the Pioneers are going for the uh, cutoff point over here. Obviously, you need this cutoff point in order to connect up to this fuel point, which is medium fuel point. They were hoping to do that by using the Rifleman to... Uh, cap away at this point, but instead the pioneers are retreating and the Volksgrenadiers, whilst they are capping away, the leftover men are shooting away at the riflemen, so combating them, obviously a little bit of engagements, the Volksgrenadiers would win this if they kept on going for hours and hours and hours, obviously it would take a long time, but that is how it's like. So as you guys can see, this point is just about to be connected up if he captures the point, and yes he is actually capturing it, as we can see the flag is moving up, uh, just the bar wasn't present there for some reason. Hmm, strange. Uh, so the uh, riflemen are going around here, around the mound, the roundabout, and the pioneers are way to cap. So what else is coming out from these guys? Now, let's talk about the players. Freestyler and Shipaka. I believe I have casted a game on Shipaka before, and they are good players. They're quite known for um, playing very good. They're expert-like. And so there's a lot to expect from this. It's a vanilla matchup. I've taken a look at it. And, you know, it, it's vanilla in every single term of vanilla, <laughs> basically. If you, uh, It basically defines what uh, Company of Heroes is, this game. And it's just absolutely great to watch. So I hope you guys will enjoy it. The MG42 out. So let's take a look. There's two Volksgrandiers, an MG42 and two pioneers, so very, very standard, very vanilla-like, as I keep on stressing. Switching on over to Freestyler, what has he got? He has three riflemen and two engineers. So no surprises, nothing shocking. They've got a, um, a correct amount of, or a normal amount of pioneers and engineers. 
So really nothing surprising there. As soon as you start getting some different sort of uh, amounts of pioneers and engineers is when you start getting uh, the weird strategies and stuff like that. So really nothing surprising at the moment. I mean, we've got some riflemen over here. We've got standard sort of Volksgrandeers push forward with the MG42 setting up in the back. So obviously supporting each other. And here we go. The squad's getting right on up in there. However, there's a flanking squad on the side. So those Volksgrandeers are really not going to do anything anything there. They're more uh, like meat targets rather than um, <laughs> uh, inflicting any damage. So the Volkswagen took a lot of casualties there. The riflemen are retreating because they cannot handle another um, wave of attacks. However, looking at the map at the moment, it seems like the Wehrmacht are recovering the right hand side. Um, so that's good. The left hand side is pretty much in the hands of the Americans. And this is where Wreck Train is going to become interesting yet again. So there's about to be some action here, but switching on over to the tactical map yet again. Look at the amount of cutoff points. We have cutoff points here, cutoff points over here, here, um, pretty much just about everywhere, and also here. <laughs> so really, there's loads and loads of cutoff points on this map. Um, so that's obviously going to be providing a lot of tactical sort of options on where you can uh, deny your opponent their resources. So, uh, flamethrowers on the engineers. I also believe we saw flamethrowers on one of the pioneer squads that retreated just a bit earlier. And so again, just loads of normal starts. Really nothing surprising here. Uh, what else is coming out? We have a supply yard, so obviously going to be moving on to the uh, motor pool. And there we go, the motor pool is about to come out. What does the Wehrmacht have? The Wehrmacht, in fact, probably has nothing really. Um, I'm not sure if he's even at T2, and no, it doesn't even look like he's at T2 since he has all of this, uh, these munitions or fuel saved up. So he's really going to have to start thinking about going up to T2 just because the motor pole is just about to come out. Obviously, he can delay the motor pole with some uh, Panzerfoss. He, he has uh, four Volksgrandier squads, so almost spam-like. Spam um, these can obviously combat the M8s or T17s with their Panzerfoss, delay them anyway. But you gotta start thinking about getting some Panzer Shreks or pack guns from T2. Likewise, skipping on over to T3 if you want to be that bold and go for that. Uh, but really, you should only go on to T3 when you have a good advantage over your opponent. Um, if you're if you've managed to uh, hold most of the map and you're constantly harassing them, denying them of fuel, then why not go for T3? However, if you're not really doing that, if it's an even match or you're actually falling back in terms of strategic points and resources, then that's probably the best chance to go on for T2 and try to get back into the fight like that. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. We have two MGs setting themselves up in the center. The, squ the squad is totally ready to get a new guy. However, they're not near a building. Um, okay, fair enough. So the MG is setting up over here. This is absolutely great. It's going to be hard for the Americans to even penetrate through this. So very heavy uh, T1 strat by Sh uh, Shepaka. He has very good solid control. Obviously this is going to be start to counter as soon as the first M8 comes out and that's pretty much it. The M8 is coming out. So this uh, impenetrable impenetrable wall of defense is about to be countered. And oh no! The Pioneer was going to put down a mine here but instead he's going to be seen and that mine is being cancelled. No point in putting a mine down if they know where it is. Oh no! He could have easily uh, lured that M8 into the mine and that would have at least uh, held back the M8 but oh well that's kind of unfortunate so the Wehrmacht in the meantime with that impenetrable defense has managed to uh, cap away the points over here denying the Americans from their points over here so the Americans got an engineer squad with a minesweeper on it and revealing that mine on the ground this is what you usually see in more expert-like games, and I'm feeling really at home with this replay. This is just something that I feel so comfortable with. It feels like something that I would do if I was the Americans or the Wehrmacht in terms of strategy. also feels like a replay I would have watched back in 2.601 or before that. It just seems very familiar and nostalgic in a way. Um, so obviously, as soon as you see Minesweepers on Pioneers or Engineers, that's obviously a good sign that your opponents are... Uh, well, good opponents, and they know what they're doing. Uh, likewise, seeing mines on the ground, and that just gives you an appreciation of what is going on. 
So two Panzerfaust already shot on that uh, M8. I believe this squad was trying to get in there for the final Panzerfaust, but instead they missed out on that opportunity. They had enough munitions to do so, however, yet again, missing out on that um, opportunity. So there needs to be an engineer to get in on there and repair that M8. That's obviously going to be denying them of some sort of capping power. So this engine, this uh, injured Volksgrenadier squad is focusing on the... Uh, engineers over here and very good choice. I love these little details. So using an injured uh, Volksgrenadier to deal with the engineers uh, while keeping all the full health squads at the main fight. Just paying attention to little details. Just so it's the, these sort of things that you gotta appreciate really. Uh, let's take a look at what else is going on. We've got T2 by um, Shipaka, so he's getting his first pack out of there. But loads and loads of infantry. What I would like to see, since he has the munitions, is actually probably a medic bunker. Um, considering all the infantry on the field. And that would definitely help a lot. We've also got grenadiers queued up in the creek barracks. So obviously going to be getting those panzer shreks out. He's got loads of ammunition. He could easily afford two of them. Um, and by the time they're out effectively on the field. He could uh, start thinking about even getting another squad. And getting a third panzer shrek. So loads of anti-tank. So how is the American going to respond to all of this? The American, he has his leading M8, which has managed to uh, penetrate the Wehrmacht defensive line on this side. However, there's a huge massive force of guys here. And here we go, a bunker coming down, facing in the wrong direction. Uh, well, it's not really facing in the wrong direction. As you guys can see, the cone is facing this way. However, if you look at actually the back or the, or the sides of the bunker, there's actually windows on pretty much all sides so they can fire out of every single direction. Um, so this is most likely going to turn into a medic bunker and yes it is, there we go. And we still have loads of munitions, just about enough, almost about enough for two Panzer Shreks. And this is what the American needs to start thinking of. How is he going to penetrate this? He needs to come in from a flanking sort of direction. However, not exactly the most effective attack. Instead, it looks like the M8 and all the riflemen are having to retreat because they were not expecting um, a mass amount of MG fire, suppressing fire, and uh, a pack there. So it looks like the Americans are actually being pushed right on back. And what is this? We have the defensive doctrine selected by Shipaka. And oh my god, I'm just feeling all the nostalgia right now. This is just... Oh god, if you guys don't know uh, anything um, about me, I, I personally have a really fo uh, great fondness for the defensive doctrine. Um, I've just always been such a... Uh, a good advocate of the uh, defensive doctrine. I just absolutely always loved it. Back in Company of Heroes Online, I was a defensive commander, and I don't know, it was just my sort of play style and just how I love to play, so I just love, absolutely love uh, seeing Shipaka using the defensive doctrine. And what we saw actually there was the uh, For the Fatherland being used, 45 ammunition, very cheap. To be honest, I think For the Fatherland, in my opinion, is actually one of the best abilities in the entire game. Uh, for 45 ammunition, you can basically imp make your uh, infantry into supermen. Um, basically what it does is decrease the amount of damage substantially, um, decreases the amount of received accuracy substantially, and also, uh, if that wasn't enough, they're very difficult to uh, suppress. So y exactly as I was saying, they basically become Superman. They're so hard to kill. If that uh, received damage wasn't enough, the received accuracy is just going to help so much. And for 45 ammunition, that works on all of your infantry in uh, your territory. And I just think it's, that's a, it's a very good ability. Very, very good. So we have Rangers out from the Americans. That obviously means he's gone for his infantry doctrine along the left hand side, I believe. I believe so. Um, he, that means he's got a rapid response. Uh, prior to that, uh, rapid response obviously means that he can bring out infantry uh, at a quicker pace. They can be built uh, faster. So that's sort of inter in interesting. However, then again, it's kind of a... Mm, not a useless ability. I suppose it just depends when. Because if you get uh, rapid response out as soon as possible, if you definitely know you're going to be going for infantry doctrining, and get that rapid response, then I suppose it could help get those riflemen out quicker. But then again, if you select it later in the game, say if you're holding back your CP and you select the rapid response later in the game, it's going to be kind of pointless because you already have most of your infantry out already and there's no reason to really have it. 
So let's uh, look at what else is going on in the field. The MA armored car shooting away at the MG42. And now I'm actually just thinking about something right now. Uh, just prior to what I was saying about rapid response, I actually do not know this. I'd like somebody to confirm this with me. Um, I'll probably leave a question in the description below, but does rapid response increase the uh, reinforcement uh, time? Because I know it affects uh, production times. I'm not exactly sure if that f uh, affects the reinforcement time. Because if it does, then that potentially will help pretty much the entire game. So I'd like somebody to just let me know about that. Because I haven't actually taken notice to that. And it just suddenly popped into my head. And I'd actually really like to know. I'm sure a lot of other people would like to know that as well. Um, so the Grenadiers moving on forward. Very solid control by the Wehrmacht. It looks like the Wehrmacht are all pretty much going to win this game uh, pretty much halfway into the game so far. And uh, what do we have? We have another Fourth Fatherland put down. We have Grenadiers capping way up here. The left hand side is in the control of the uh, Wehrmacht, which are back capping towards the points that they do not have at the moment. However, it looks like the Americans are going to be pushing along here. And the Americans are just in such a such a pickle at the moment how are they going to penetrate this what they are going to do is actually get their uh, rangers to uh, put on their heroic charge and fire up and get on in there and take out pretty much all everything that the Wehrmacht had here what was the Wehrmacht player doing did he just completely f forget about everything he had over here because his Volksgrenadiers could easily have retreated there but this is just um, gonna catch him down catch the Wehrmacht player with his pants down um, he has nothing to respond to over here. He has nothing. He's got a uh, whole bunch of uh, men coming back onto this side. However, he's left the side totally open for the uh, riflemen and Americans to set up some defensive positions behind the cover and start fighting their way back into the battle. The nice thing though is that uh, For the Fatherland is used yet again in friendly territory. That is such a great benefit of having this over here. And look at this, despite all the bar fire coming down on the Volksgrandiers, they're hardly getting damaged and uh, being killed. So absolutely brilliant. We have two snipers out in the field, one by the Wehrmacht and one by the uh, Americans. So that means we have a back, cap, back tech to uh, WSC. This is obviously to combat the uh, frontal lines of the Americans or the Wehrmacht to take away at their MGs, at their packs, at their sniper, and to just generally wear away at them. So very good decision. And what was this? We had a counter snipe. We had a counter snipe by the American sniper. The Wehrmacht sniper is just taken down with the pack firing away in retaliation against the MA armored car. Can we get some sort of dishing power out from the Wehrmacht? Can they recover? It seems like the Americans are doing a massive sort of push. The the Wehrmacht lines are really falling back. The uh, these Volksgrenadiers are really badly damaged. They really need to just I don't know get their um, push back the Americans as soon as possible. Get on back to the base. Get reinforced. But really, uh, God, how is this going to turn out? I have no clue. This Wehrmacht squad going down and the other Volksgrenadier squad retreating. They have Veterancy three on them. That means they have health regeneration. They have. Uh, Veteran C2, which has to deal with the received accuracy, they do not get elite armor, and they have also Veteran C3, which affects their uh, max amount of health, which gives them plus 20%, so obviously that is going to help a lot. We've also got the Medic Bunker, which is uh, obviously going to help loads and loads and loads throughout this game, due to the heavy infantry use by the Wehrmacht, obviously going to be uh, getting loads of Grenadiers out of that. The Grenadiers uh, fighting the Thompsons. Uh, near range, that's kind of an iffy thing. It doesn't look like the best of ideas, but still look at this. Barely taking any damage. One grenade almost taking out that ranger squad. I don't know why they actually didn't keep stay there and take it out. Iffy thing to be doing there. Um, what I wanted to mention was that despite all this battling happen happening, the Wehrmacht really need to recover. Uh, they had multiple injured squads on the field. What they really needed to do was get back to their base or this medic bunker and re... Um, had reinforced their squads. They had multiple squads just making their way back onto the field, but really they did not at one point there have much to defend themselves. All they had was an MG, a pack, and that was pretty much it. The rest of their uh, sides were left bare. And so the Americans managed to make a very good push um, pretty much by the mistake of the Wehrmacht, what the Wehrmacht really needed to do was hold that line a little bit better, maybe put some more barbed wire down, maybe get a uh, mine down somewhere, but what, one really big mistake that they done was that they just didn't retreat their squads, despite the 
uh, Thompson's just uh, closing in on that MG and the Volksgrenadiers here. They just stayed there and he lost them, which is a very needless loss. So in the entire big battle that we had there, I believe we saw the an MG42 go down and two Volksgrenadier squads. Very big loss. I believe this Volksgrenadier squad might actually recap this. It would be a kind of bad idea if they'd done it. And yeah, that's what I mean by bad idea. So he just basically sacrificed the squad to recap this and oh my god, no! Oh! Man. Just losing another squad, that's... I don't know, it's just a really big sort of... Um, painful losses to see. We saw... So basically we saw in the space of a few minutes, uh, four minutes there, about three Volksgrenadier squads go down. Um, if we're going to be talking about, you know, costs, that is easily over 700 manpower, if not a bit more than that, um, just lost by the Wehrmacht. You know, it's very good. It's it's very good that at least the bunker is here to get those squads back. But when we're talking about uh, losses like that, that's that's massive losses. Uh, we're about to get some sort of uh, howitzer barrage over here. Howitzer shoot, should I say? I absolutely love saying that um, that ability, the howitzer shoot, because it just doesn't sound it just doesn't sound proper. It should it should actually be like howitzer barrage or something like that. But for some reason, uh, Relic decided it should be Howitzer Shoot. So, okay, that's fine. Why not? Uh, the Riflemen are approaching the section over here, the sector. And they're most likely going to be doing some more harassive sort of stuff. The Wehrmacht, however, are on the fallback. They are trying to defend the Americans from their push onto Berlin. Obviously, um, not managing to hold their lines too properly. Where is that American sniper? Because I believe he's been alive for quite a while. 12 kills on that American sniper, so very good job by him. Um, so let's say 12 times 30. Uh, how much is that? 360? So he is already paid off for himself. So well done, Mr. Sniper. Good job. Another kill coming down for him. And these Grandiers having a really hard time. So if you think about it, Grandiers, four guys in a squad. Uh, sniper a kill on one of those will effectively take out half the fighting power um, by 25% each time you shoot. Um, so that's kind of an iffy thing. Obviously you gotta be really really careful, at least that other Wehrmacht sniper is out. The Wehrmacht however are back in force in the center, loads and loads of guys. If we do a sort of panoramic view, look at that, loads of them. But more engagements happening. So how are the Wehrmacht are gonna? How are they gonna uh, respond to all of this uh, pushing back? Well, they could keep on being stubborn and building more infantry. I suppose you could do that. It's probably not the most effective way in the long term. Um, however, you could go on to the next uh, tier, tier three. Hmm, that's kind of an iffy thing. If we look at the uh, fuel supply, actually. He only has 71 saved up at the moment, so I suppose I could understand that. Maybe we go for a Sturm Armory. He did spend loads of uh, veterancy on his infantry, uh, so that's obviously going to be very costly. Likewise, he has uh, veterancy on his sniper as well, so obviously very costly in terms of uh, fuel. So I suppose I could understand the Sturm Armory. What could he get out of that, though? Maybe he's going to go for a Geshut Wagon or something, or Stug, to combat any armor because it's kind of likely that there might be a tank depot that might come out at some point since the Americans aren't just going to stay at this uh, at this progression of tiers the entire game they're likely that they might want to go for heavy tanks always uh, these things to consider likewise the Wehrmacht might actually go for uh, a, a naval Werfer I believe that's actually the first time I've ever said it correct a naval Werfer or they might go for the Puma to combat the uh, Rangers Obviously both very good choices. So I'm not exactly sure if the Riflemen have stickies at the moment. Uh, they have the bars, but I'm not exactly sure about the stickies. Uh, because we haven't seen any Vermog vehicles, so hence we haven't seen any of those stickies being thrown. So the Rangers getting on close to the Grenadiers. The Grenadiers have absolutely no chance against the Thompsons. Whilst the battling over here, the Riflemen are retreating and the Wehrmacht are pushing the Americans back. However, the Americans do have an AT gun along with a M8 armored car over here. So obviously going to be countering any sort of push or at least holding it back anyway. 
And so I'm really stuck at what could happen. I mean, we're 23 minutes into the game and really it's still open up to whoever could win this. 20, 287 points for the Wehrmacht, 470 for the Americans. So the Americans are winning this by points so far. They have both VPs in their possessions um, while whilst the Amer Wehrmacht have won. So the Wehrmacht points are just ticking down one by one. Tick tock, tick tock. But oh my god, no, another squad going down over here. It looks like it was a Grenadier squad, entire Grenadier squad. That is not good. I'm not exactly sure what happened to Shiplaka's uh, macro and micro, but it really looks like he's not paying attention to what's happening across the entire field. Um, I suppose this has become a very difficult thing about using such a heavy sort of infantry strategy. It's just hard to maintain every single squad that you have on the field. If, you've got, if you're fighting all over the map, it's going to be really, really hard. And here we have some pioneers closing in. Oh no, he probably doesn't see it. Oh god, yes he did. Luckily, in the nick of time, this uh, one pioneer just about to be killed there. However, just managed to get out of there. So how is the Thomas the tank engine feeling at the moment? Well, Thomas is just watching this all going on. And Thomas is just cold as uh, metal. He's just watching this with such a cold heart. Uh, probably just enjoying it, if anything. So well done, Thomas the tank engine. You'll be back into action someday pulling the coaches once this track is repaired. So more battling yet again by the Wehrmacht and the Americans. But, oh man, the Wehrmacht are having such a difficult time. The Americans just have such a constant harassive sort of force. It's just all the time just constantly harassing the sniper just about to go down. No! The Wehrmacht are just crumbling bit by bit. You can just feel it. You can see it. And this, oh, this folks range your squad might be going down as well. And yes, he just managed to get out of there. So that is okay. There's a grenade missing by the uh, Grenadiers, and another grenade missing as well. So the Ninja Rifleman doing a very good job of just dodging those attacks while we have a um, barrage over here by looks like a howitzer since we see a sort of tail behind the uh, shot. So the engagements are done over here. And yes, we have a howitzer. That is just because of the infantry doctrine. So also a tank depot coming down from the uh, Americans. And that tank depot will definitely seal the deal for the um, Americans and win this if they can get some sort of uh, Sherman out or something like that. So the Volksgrenadier is one man by himself, a very courageous man indeed. He's probably bleeding out considering how low he is on health, yet he's just going to keep on fighting. He's going to fight for the fatherland um, as best as he can. Even if he dies, it doesn't matter because he's just such a brave man. Instead, what he's going to do is uh, reinforce himself at the medic bunker over here. Well, we got a Puma out from the Sturm Armory and not a bad decision either considering that there's so many... Um, infantry on the field. This pioneer squad going down that was just uh, getting the flamethrowers over there so kind of a waste to be just losing pioneers like that and the flamethrower as well. So what else is going on? The Wehrmacht are just holding in on the center. What we had earlier in the game, they had such a great control of everything. They were held back the Americans at their base, and the Americans just managed to push in on one side, and that's when everything just started to go to hell. Um, everything just started to crumble bit by bit. This Puma has no clue which direction he should go, and the, here we go. The the AT guns are so inaccurate against Pumas now in 2.602, it's just so hard to even hit them anymore. The one thing to note, however, is that um, what we had pre-2.602 was that the uh, Pumas actually got a received accuracy uh, bonus or decrease, if you want to call it that, per veterancy level, but they don't actually get that anymore. So I suppose in a way they are easier to hit, but then again, still managed to dodge those AT gun shots very, very well. So two Pumas on the field, one needing desperate repair, but really this is going to be so hard for the Wehrmacht. The Americans have such great control, they probably have a very good uh, fuel income rate, and yes they have plus 36. They have a Sherman coming out onto the field, which is not up guns because his turret is actually quite small. And just loads and loads of guys, if you just look at what he has. Tons. In fact, he's had, he has a veterancy 3 sniper 
Wow, we don't usually see that. That has 22 kills on him, so he has definitely earned his um, his badge, and definitely going to be very hard to combat. As you guys can see, he's just he can actually walk while he's camouflaged or run, if you want to say that, and that is just due to his veterancy. I believe his veterancy three actually that he's able to do that, and so very hard to spot as well. I believe that's another part of uh, thing that's part of his veterancy bonuses. As you guys can see, this go. The Grenadiers were right next to him, basically. And they couldn't even spot him. So, the Americans. Uh, so, if we're going to be talking about the veterancy, the American veterancy is very important. If you keep your guys alive as long as possible, then you will reap the rewards of having that veterancy. And now we have just multiple squads of veterancy, and it's just so hard to, for the Wehrmacht to even just finish them off and kill them. And just, oh my god, bit by bit, the ghost pack is moving back. The howitzers are shooting down here, just wearing away. The bunker's taking damage. Uh, we just have body parts everywhere, and this is truly wrecked train. Just everything is just destroyed. Just horrible stuff. So the Americans pushing in on the Wehrmacht. They have, uh, the Wehrmacht only have 115, 112 points left. It's really not looking good for them. The sniper is countering some of the medics. And the medic, it looks like he's going to be picking up the guy that the other medic was trying to pick up. So trying to finish off the job. But we have an artillery sh uh, howitzer shoot coming down over here. Oh my god, this is the last thing that the Wehrmacht need. They're having such a difficult time of even doing anything. They can't even counter this stuff. No! A Grenadier squad being hit by a stray shot. Taking them out. The medic is taken out over uh, as well. Just one more shot from practically anything can take out this medic bunker. Uh, we have, what do we have from the Vermont? Just let's look at what they have left. And it's just almost nothing. They have uh, two Grenadier squads, uh, MG42, a Pioneer, a Puma, and a Pack. But really, this is just, there's nothing that they can do anymore. They've lost so much ground. They've lost so much of their men due to not the best of uh, unit preservations and it's just been it's too much they're probably outnumbered now by let's see they have a population of 16 freestyler has a population of 57 obviously that includes the howitzer and all that great stuff on it but um 65 population that's almost four that's basically four times as much as what the Wehrmacht has and when you think about it that's about three to four times the fighting force that is uh, against the Axis, and it's just so hard for them to do anything. I mean, the Grand Deers can grab the Panzer Shrek, or the uh, have the Panzer Shrek here, but one Panzer Shrek isn't going to do anything against the Sherman. Obviously, you can damage it, but it's going to have a really difficult time, especially two Shermans like this. This Sherman, for some reason, is just staying there and taking some shots. I suppose he's trying to be like Enemy bait, and it looks like it. It's just so that the sniper could get in there and take out that pack, and now. The Wehrmacht are in just such a tough position. Just one... Oh god, I was speaking too soon. I was going to say one Panzer Shrek, but even the Panzer Shrek was taken out there. And now the Wehrmacht have nothing. Just absolutely nothing. They have uh, Pioneer Squad. Their base looks like it was actually getting barraged by uh, probably the Howitzer. And that's pretty much it. It looks like 49 points left for the Axis. They are being encircled by the Americans. Shipaka is saying well played. And indeed, Freestyle has played actually very, very well. However, I do believe in a way it's actually Shipaka's fault um, or mistakes for letting him down. So what we actually saw, and this is the end of the playback, what we actually saw over here and what was the beginning of the end was that the MG42 was taken out along with the Volksgrenadier squad. Okay, I suppose that might have been, uh, you might have been able to recover from that. However, he lost them and this left the Americans a, a flank that they could approach. And after that, the Amer the Vermont just started to crumble because their unit preservation really went down the drain. They lost multiple squads that they shouldn't have, probably just due to a lack of looking around the map and seeing what's happening. Uh, for the Americans, I'm not exactly sure what the Americans could have done. They are actually doing a very good job just trying to harass in multiple places. Um, perhaps one thing they might have done or could have done, um, since they were totally locked on this side and this side from the early to mid game, was perhaps actually go on this side. Considering there's actually nothing over here, he could potentially have 
uh, cross the bridge over here with a fake squad to lure the MG42 fire whilst heading in on the center with his main force. So I don't know, maybe that's what you could have done. Uh, so anyway guys, so I hope you enjoyed this replay and I hope you enjoyed just having another vanilla matchup. So again, until next time, this is Krebs Coho and Thomas the Tank Engine and we will see you guys later. Bye bye.